question and what is happening within the Democratic Party. Uh, Ms. Babidie Mary Kabanda, the incumbent woman MP for Masaka District, yes, and also the DP National Treasurer, was the first person to come out and publicly offer her support to the National Unity Platform presidential candidate, that is Robert Chagulanyi. Yes, and also over the weekend this week, we did see another very, very big person at the higher echelon of the Democratic Party, that is the vice president of the party, Fred Mukasambide coming out to offer support uh, to Robert Chagulani, the National Unity Platform presidential candidate. And he actually said it is Mao himself, no, but Mao, uh, the president of the um, Democratic Party, who gave him the green light to go ahead and support uh, the presidential candidate for the National Unity Platform Party. But then we got information on Tuesday from the spokesperson of the Democratic Party, that is Mr. Okola Opio, who said, no, 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 the assertions by Mr. Mbide are very untrue. True. We did not actually sanction uh, him to support the no presidential candidate, Robert Chagulanyi, because the DP party already has a presidential candidate who is in the race. They've already fielded, uh, fielded candidates uh, for the presidential uh, race, uh, for the parliamentary race, and all other local government positions. So that is the biggest contestation that we want to unpack right here on this show with the Secretary General of the party, that is Mr. Siranda Gerard, and he joins me right now in studio. Very good morning, Siranda. Good morning, Romeo, and uh, our dear viewers out there, the Democratic Party members, and the team on the campaign trail, and my party people as well. First things first, uh, Mr. Siranda, is it true that uh, the DP is now an empty house? You only have six MPs who are loyal to the party. Everyone has left and vacated to the National Unity Platform Party, others to the Alliance for National Transformation, others to FDC, but majorly the NOOP uh, defections are so rife. Why are we seeing this? No, I think the defections to NOOP mm. uh, hold history. Mm -hmm. That happened before we went for nominations. Mm. And members went that went to NOOP are now uh, in NOOP, and, and we don't want to pay attention to what is happening in NOOP. More DP, than 20? You don't no, think that's a problem? I, it is history now because mm. they are not with us. Mm. We rather pay our attention to the people that have remained with us and the members that we nominated, the 240. Mm. Why don't we focus on those members of mm. parliament that we nominated? and focus on building those and making sure that they win to come to the House. Let's talk, about, let's talk about precedence. They let fine. That is history. Yeah. So don't you think it offers bad precedence for the party? It weakens the structures of the party. You only have six loyal MPs to the Democratic in Party, fact, and we are in a very contentious election period. In fact, the party nominated more candidates than before. I see. And you know that there were places where people did not even want primaries to happen. They left and they created vacuum for... for, for for new members. And I'm telling you, when you look at Chadema, do you know how many people Chadema lost, including its Secretary General and the leader of opposition? They all went to, to, to uh, CCM. But the party is moving on. Mm. When you go to uh, MDCT of Morgan Changarai, people crossed. But the party has continued to, vis to, to move. And I think for me, these contradictions, these members have continued to go to the same push mm of same side, even if they come to the House now, they still sit on the opposition mm -hmm. side. I think for me the main thing, if they still think and focus on regime change and peaceful transition, mm -hmm. then we are in the same line. For us as a party, we are focusing on building our true troops that believe in the struggle that we have as a party, that believe in the mission, that believe uh, in... in uh, I, I, uh, that, 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 that are on the same mm. journey with us mm. and that I believe that w the Democratic Party mm. was formed and this mission is to achieve power and, and uh, we believe mm. that we have true members and true believers and our focus is on those. The other things of members of the party, for instance the Vice President and the National Treasurer of the party, they are nominated members on the Democratic Party. Mm. They did not leave DP. They are nominated members on the Democratic Party who maybe believe because of the dynamics in their areas, they have to say they are going with Chagulani. That is a matter that we shall deal with internally as a house. Mm. I don't want to take that as a main thing that uh, we're going to focus. You have not had that outside. Mm. You have not had, for instance, nobody in Palisa can ask me to say that if you're not going to support this candidate A or this, you're not going to go on. I am going on 
and the dynamics of Palisa and other districts and regions are different from Central Region. So we will have to deal with matters of Central mm. Region, and as a party, we have to understand what dynamics are in which particular region and how do we deal with them mm. as leaders <coughs> without even coming to a set and discuss internally, uh, I mean, internal contradictions of Honorable Kamanda and Honorable Mbide. Mm. We will deal with those. Mbide is the vice president of the party. There are processes on how we will have to work with him. Mm. Uh, Honorable Babiri Kamanda is a treasurer, national treasurer general of the party who was nominated and withstood the pressure. Mbide and Bavire withstood all the pressure when the others crossed and they remained with the party. So I think we have to deal with them uh, basing on scenarios and the particular case by case. Mr. Selanda, don't you think the divisions we are seeing now were bathed simply because uh, the people from the other side, Mary uh, Bavirie Kabanda and um, Bide and the, the rest who left, they were saying that uh, the party should have rallied all their support behind the National Unity Platform presidential candidate Robert Chagulanyi, but then the scaffold ensued uh, because Norbert Mao did not want that. He did not want to join any coalition. Why has DP or the upper echelon uh, people in DP refused to join a coalition to take on Museveni? Romeo, hmm. nobody invested in the coalition building than Norbert Mao. Hmm. We did everything. The Honorable Robert Chagulanyi was brought to all our um, main u u reunions mm. funded by the institution. We have done everything. We drafted the Grand People's Coalition, invited everybody. We wrote everybody. Nobat Mao was the last person to be nominated because we still believe that there was room for these negotiations to have a coalition. And everything failed. Mm. It was not our side. Mm. We went to the National Delegate Conference and endorsed mm. that the Honorable Robert Mao, actually DP's National Delegate Conference from all the parties that are running now, was the last. Because we still waited that our colleagues will honor and will pay attention to our Grand People's Coalition proposal. Mm. We came up with the one-to-one -one model. All those are ideas that DP has fronted. Mm. And I don't want you to forget that DP has been at the back point, ba backbone mm. for ensuring that we have a, a coalition. Mm. When Besige had problems, he ran to the DP. When Amama and Babas had problems, mm. he ran to the DP. Even Bukenya ran to DP. Mm. Even Sejusa ran to DP. DP is a conscious of this nation. And mm. we believe that nobody single-handedly has enough firewood to take out Museven. Mm -hmm. What we are doing now is like a church. We are the Protestants, the, we have the Anglican, I mean Anglicans or Protestant, we have the Catholics, we have the born again. All of us are saying Satan is bad and he must go. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to do is to push Satan from every angle and mm -hmm. every corner. And I believe that nobody alone has enough fire to push out Satan. So we need to cooperate. We still believe that we can still need to cooperate. For instance, in Palisa. Mm. I, am, I have offered myself, I am going to put agents for all the presidential candidates who are in opposition because mm. I believe nobody has capacity to mm. collect all the declaration forms that are going to be needed at point A. Mm. So for me, I think the question now is how do we push this coalition? If it has failed at top level, how do we push it at, uh, at, uh, at uh, parliamentary level? Mm -hmm. How do we push it at uh, a local council level? Because we have, right, we have nominated the candidates, but mm -hmm. there are areas where you actually see that the other candidate has an advantage over you. And if we have several candidates pushing here and this mm -hmm. corner and the other mm -hmm. corner, in fact, we're going to give the regime a lot of headache. You give headache here, you give headache in the back, you give headache in the... So all, all parts of the body. So what we are trying to do now is to make the regime busy Mm. And at the end of the day, you work together for the single cause that mm. you believe in. Following the defections, now you have only six MPs left in your coffers as the Democratic Party. Do you, think, do you still think the party, the Democratic Party, is still a formidable force to take on President Museveni there come no, January 14th? There is no party that is formidable than the Democratic Party. Other parties are formed for the purpose of going to win elections, mm. and they leave. The Democratic Party will continue to stay and he has survived all the waves, and mm. I believe that it will survive. Mm. These times that presented before the nomination were good times for the party. Imagine if everybody had stayed, and then after nomination they said they're leaving. Mm. This process happened before nomination, and I want to tell you, Romeo and Ugandans, we are building a formidable party, and we continue to build and riding on our history. Mm -hmm. Our party has history, our party has values, mm -hmm. and our party has a mission, and I believe that we're on the right track, mm. We will judge ourselves Indeed. on 12th.
of 14, 14th of, December, of, of January Indeed. 2020. Uh, Jared Saranda, let's unpack an incident that unfolded in Chortida last week. On Friday, we did see the demise of uh, Richard Kayabula, mm. a 44-year-old DP supporter mm. who was shot dead by a police officer who was dispersing around his supporters within that jurisdiction. And we've also noticed more, uh, my, uh, you know, more uh, uh, incidences of uh, electroviolence on uh, so, uh, people being killed. Noob supporters were killed, 54 of them. And uh, what do you make of all this, the electroviolence that has taken center stage within this election? First, as uh, the Secretary General of the party, mm. we've, we want to send our heartfelt condolences mm -hmm. to the family of our late DP supporter. Richard I, Kayabula. Richard Kayabula. I engaged the chairman of Chotera District, uh, Dr. Baloja Darlington Tom, and we asked him to lodge a formal complaint, but also report the district returning officer. The incident that is happening in Chotera is uncalled for. Some individual who thinks he owns the police, mm -hmm. the individual who thinks he's in government, that specific po point where the DP uh, was, on the program, DP was supposed to be there by the DP candidate. Mm -hmm. Then the other candidate A of the ruling party brings his other function in the same, same locality, mm -hmm. like just 100 meters away, mm -hmm. because it was his home sub-county. But by the program of electoral commission, the DP candidate was supposed to be in that place. So these chaos were uncalled for, and I think we are going to take on mm. the police individually as the individual police officer. We are also opening a case on the, the area returning officer for failing to manage mm. a process like this. It's uh, very, very, very painful mm. that we are speaking about losing life mm. on a person who had come to support uh, Of course, Gerard, in contrast, we saw what was happening this week. The president was in Barada. We did not see any, you know, tear gas taking center stage, even though procedures were being mounted by his supporters. He went to Ntungamo. We saw the same thing. Supporters were not being tear gassed. But, uh, that is... Um, Balam, uh, the music promoter, mm. was actually mobilizing people to support the mm. president on the sidelines. Even though the president, during his official venues, there was social distancing and adherence to the standard operating procedures, what we were seeing on the sides was, uh, you know, supporters going ahead to freely mount processions in the wake of police just watching on. Using the, using the variation of what happened in Chotera, using the variations mm -hmm. of what happened on November 18th and 19th, do you think police is actually uh, using selective application of I, the law? I, I think the police has failed to be an independent police. The police is acting like it is an NRM uh, uh, machinery. Mm. And they are using COVID-19 to damage and fail the opposition from, from, from organizing and sending out the messages. Like we've said, this Chotera case, we've reported it to the DR, we've reported it to the police, we've given them two days to act, and then we see where we, we swing into action mm -hmm. for court cases. And the same to people that, uh, that lost their lives, the noob supporters and all those. And, and innocent people, you've seen what is happening to Amulia Tralis, you saw what was happening to Nobat Mao in Bali and, uh, and Kamuli. Mm. This is a clear sign that, and, and we've not had the Electoral Commission, apart from writing, you know, we've not had the Electoral Commission come out clearly. We've not even seen the president mm -hmm. in his capacity as the president of, of the Republic of Uganda, but also as a candidate, come up to uh, speak against this violence. I, I think for me it's uncalled for. We've uh, uh, seen, mm. uh, you've, you've talked about Balam, but mm. you've also seen uh, Bebe Kool mm. mobilizing supporters in Guru and all those. Mm. And, and, and yesterday I saw in Ntungamo, the president was happily waving. Mm. He came out on the roof and he was waving and mm. without even talking about the COVID-19. Even when he stepped at the podium, he did not critique mm. what Balam and the other people had done in terms of mobilizing mm. people to come up. Right. In the venue, there was social distance, but the people that make the... the, the, the that engineer the pressure mm. and make sure that there is life in the campaigns mm. are the people that he, he was waving at. Mm. Because it's a signal that he sends that uh, because COVID is not only going to, to, to deal with, it's not going to contract only the people that are within the, the talisman, I mean the venue with social distance and fully masked. Mm. You saw people when he was moving to, uh, uh, heading pro towards the venue. There was no mask in Intungamo. I did not see that in Mbarara. Mm. No, never did I see that in Palisa. Oh, all and, right. and, and for me, that's, that's a double standard that I think this government, Indeed. in the police, 
is using hiding under COVID to block other people from sending their messages. Well, let's ascertain whether or not this is a double standard with Bishop Samuel, who is joining us remotely online. Bishop Samuel works for the NRM and he also uh, works, uh, speaks for the NRM and also works for the Uganda Media Center. We want to get to know this side of government. Bishop Samuel, a very good morning. Yes, um, a very good morning uh, to our viewers. Like you said, my name is Bishop Samuel. Uh, of course, I'm NRM and I work for Minister of ICT mm. and National Guidance. Mm. First B of all, B Bishop Samuel, before you do, I want to give you a clear cut preamble into this. Um, we've seen processions being mounted by supporters of the NRM who are not being tear gassed under the watchful eye of the police. But then on the other side, the opposition, whenever they mount the same, yes, we are seeing them being met by tear gas and heavy handedness of the police. Are we dealing with selective application of the law? Is it true that it's your uh, presidential candidate, President Museveni, who is in charge of this election and not the Electoral Commission, as intimated by the opposition members? Uh, first of all, I, would, I am uh, disturbed by the fact that we still have um, church leaders who think that we, there, is no, there is no human rights for, for the youth. I, ha I read it yes, uh, the other day in the papers that uh, uh, one of the churches has said that there is, no, that there is no human rights for the youth. But I can tell you, that is really very wrong and misleading. We have never had human rights like we have them today. And we are talking about human rights because there is human rights to talk about today. In the past, we had Human Rights Watch and AMREF Uganda. These are human rights NGOs which used to monitor Uganda in, from Nairobi. They were not even here. In the 70s, we had no human rights. Today, we are talking about human rights because uh, the government of NRM has, met, has ensured that there is a platform to talk about human rights and everybody knows that they have a right to something. Instead of church leaders actually concentrating on human rights, I think for me, it's better to, us, to, to help us that the biggest problem we have in the youth is the drugs, not human rights. The youth don't have human rights. That's why they are going to vote. That's why they, they feel that actually when the human rights is infringed, they report. Okay? So I think I, I would request the church leaders really to, to when in their churches to help us, to help Uganda with the youth, with the issues of drugs, so that they can become useful youth than they are today. Now, getting back to your question, really, uh, it, the law is not selective. The law is not selective at all. I have uh, had my brother was, was saying, actually, that we are using COVID as, as an excuse. But you see, this is a problem we have with opposition in Uganda. These, the, these candidates, the opposition candidates, wherever they go, they don't have anything to tell our people. Why? The government of NRM has done everything. So now what they do, instead of following guidelines given to them by the electoral commission, they resort to, uh, actually, they resort to breaching the guidelines such that police can come in. Before you know it, the run is done. Now what they, in return, what they say, uh, the government has failed us from campaigns. But sincerely speaking, if they are to follow guidelines, who would, uh, who would actually stop well, them? But at this opportune moment, we'd like to okay. take on Ali Mivule. That is our... You're watching Morning at NTV. It's brought to you by ITEL Mobile. Enjoy better life. Welcome back to the number one breakfast show in the country, Morning at NTV. My name is Romeo Busik. Of course, we are still taking a look at the contentious election period during this uh, election that is going to be taking center stage on January 14th. We do have Gerard Siranda, the uh, Secretary General for the Democratic Party. He's not alone online. Remotely, we are joined by Bishop Samuel from Uganda Media Center. He speaks for the NRM. Bishop Samuel, uh, you're still online. We were still talking about the issue of uh, selective application of the law and you were still 
still giving uh, your submission before we veered off uh, to uh, Ali Mifule, who was giving us an update on Robert Chagulanyi. Bishop? Yeah. Yes, Bishop, you were still giving us your submission on uh, selective application of the law. I, I think we shall get back to Bishop. He's uh, actually caught unaware. Uh, let's continue, Gerard Siranda. <clears throat> So the situation right now, COVID-19 and uh, yeah, has can, been yeah, given yeah, as yeah, a reason yeah. as to why we are, say, we are seeing the heavy-handedness of uh, police towards the opposition. But then, if COVID-19 was not in the offing, if it was not in the equation, do you think the situation would have been any different? I don't know. Does Bishop speak for DNRM or he speaks for government? <coughs> because these are different things. Mm. The media center is a government entity mm. that draws monies from government. Mm. So there should be a difference between people that are speaking for government and people that speak for the NRM. I know that mm. the NRM is in power, mm. but there's a difference between government and the NRM. NRM is just a party in power. And now, during the political period, we expect that we should separate the two completely. Mm. Mm. And so so but, right, uh, right now, during this election, can you separate President Museveni, the candidate, no, no, the, and President Museveni, the incumbent? The laws are different that govern this. When mm. you're president, you continue to be in the office. Mm. But for now, we address the NRM as the party mm. that is competing mm. with the Democratic Party, with the, with the FDC and the other mm. parties. And I expected the bishop to be very honest. Mm. There is nothing like opposition mm. in the thing. Mm. COVID affects the opposition, but it also affects the NRM because we have family members mm. and our community that live jointly together. All right, let's first get his submission on the issue of selective application of law. Bishop, you are still giving us your submission on selective application of the law before we interrupted you. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, um, what I was saying, mm. that there is no selective interpretation of the law. Mm -hmm. The issue of saying that um, NRM gathers crowds mm. and when uh, the opposition gathers crowds then there is a problem i can assure you everywhere candidate yoweri him seven goes he is always advising people please don't gather he is not in consent with the people gathering that is one two you say in this period this is where you see like you know, you, you may fail to control people, but you can't encourage to, for uh, their gathering. How? If these people uh, gather and then a candidate encourages them by maybe uh, using their open roof cars and they come out uh, to wave or to talk, like I've seen some candidates like, uh, for, for example, Chagulani, sincerely speaking, that is encouraging the gathering and there is no there is no there is no reason as to why you don't, you don't expect police to come in give me one one rally or one meeting where where people gathered and the president uh put his out of the open roof to to address the people give me that one gathering Bishop, in Bishop, the yes, he said thank you very much but i would don't encourage Bishop, the, gathering. the president was waving at supporters in intungamo what do you have to say about that uh, say that again. The president was saving, uh, was waving at supporters in Intungamo yesterday. Yes, he, he waved at people uh, in Intungamo at a distance, at a very big distance. What we expected was him to castigate those people to get off the roads, not to wave. It seems like he was uh, giving them that confirmation that yes, you're my people, and I'm glad that you're there, waving uh, even in the wake of COVID-19. Uh, actually, you see, the, when he was, when he was uh, addressing them mm. after the waving, I don't know if you followed, if you followed but he, he still encouraged them he does not support the gathering. Sometimes as a candidate who is loved by people, basically it is very difficult to control such crowds. But, but Bishop, but where, the, Bishop but where, the was the police, time, where was the police in all this? Because when it comes to the opposition people, the police is always there to ensure their presence and to let the people know that what they are doing is wrong and they should disperse. Where was the police? But in, if, 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 I've, if, 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 I, if I've not forgotten, in Karamoja, police, police came in to disperse crowds. And I've had my, uh, uh, some, some allegations whereby the people were saying, Baram, baby cool, you know, for them, they gather crowds. They were, they were stopped and they had to find other means of doing the activities. So it, if police doesn't come in, it doesn't mean that police is working for NRM. 
Police is not working for NRM. It is called Uganda Police, not NRM Police. Mm. So basically, there is no way you can tell me that actually, uh, now uh, uh, when a candidate of NRM is campaigning, for them actually they have a, um, a free pass to have gatherings and then opposition uh, of, of course, we, should some, we, we saw what happened. La, we saw what happened last These week. Uh, the EC. state minister for microfinance, Mr. Haruna Kasolo, was holding an open rally last week. Ms. Haruna Kasolo, the state minister for microfinance, last week he was holding an open rally. We didn't see police uh, throw tear gas at any of the supporters. Don't you think this is a clear-cut appli uh, selective application of the law? I mean, based on the factors we, we are giving you, Mr. Bishop. Y yes. Uh, yes, I agree that uh, uh, Honorable Bokasolo had a rally. That was, uh, everybody saw it. Yes, everybody saw it. But I can assure you, as I speak of now, Honorable Bokasolo, um, the law caught up with him. Mm -hmm. Okay, How? The law caught up with him. And uh, um, I know very well that he's, he's, he has a case to answer. Mm. That one, that one is, it doesn't mean that he had a rally. Then the police is reluctant on him. Um, I followed up his case, and I know is in the police is, he, is really trying to investigate with him. B Bishop, Bishop Samuel, the, the, the issue right now pertains to, uh, to um, the behavior of the security apparatus. You said Haruna Kasolo has a case to answer. He's not in jail right now because of the violation of SOPs. But then other candidates, Robert Chagulani, other candidates, Patrick Amuria Tobo, have been thrown in jail simply because or arrested. Yes, preventive arrest, simply because they are violating COVID-19 rules. We are talking about the behavior of the police towards the various presidential candidates in this race. When it comes to all the parliamentary candidates, when it comes to Haruna Kasolo, we are going to talk to him. We are going to put him in check. Yes, but then when it comes to other candidates, it is tear gas, it is jail time. Don't you think that's what we are talking about, selective application of the law, uh, uh, Bishop mm -mm, Samuel? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. You, mm -mm. you see... This is this is the thing. Mm. Now you are we are talking about Chagulani, we are talking about Amuria, actually who are try the, these two who are trying to convince their sponsors wherever they get their funding from that I'm I'm, I'm doing better than the other. Oh. But I can tell you, the uh, what you are talking about tear gas uh, on the on the two candidates. First of all, Honorable Chagulani with the following where he has to be he is up to date he mm. still has a very big problem mm. a very very big problem if he knows that i'm supposed to be maybe at a certain playground for him he wants that he, he has to stop at um, at, a, at a playground i mean at a, a trading center okay to address crowds there which is not allowed that's why actually in some areas he's being whisked away maybe from where he has slept and is taken straight where he's supposed to meet his people such that he doesn't make uh, he doesn't mess up around he, he has done this several times and when he's advised he does not he doesn't listen and this is someone even who told you from day one i he's not going to follow any guidelines of ec and the other time when he went to visit the chairman of the electoral commission it was very clear what took him there he was scared of being disqualified from the race because of not following the guidelines. So basically, it's not, it's not a selection. If you look at all these candidates, we're talking about Honorable Muriat, uh, Honorable, Honorable Chagulani, these are people actually who are not following, uh, who are not following what, what was given, the guidelines that were given to them mm. by uh, electoral commission. Otherwise, I, there is the police I know cannot tear gas, cannot disperse a crowd where, where when you are following uh, the guidelines and routes given to you. But if you want to stop in trading centers, it's not that everyone wants to be in campaigns. People have work to do. That's why you are given designated areas mm. that from here, you are going to be here. Don't stop in trading centers. But the fact that these people they want trading centers. You know, this, this, these are candidates. I don't know even why they joined this race. They have nothing to tell the people. They have nothing. You can imagine someone who goes to, goes to uh, Kamuli, and then uh, instead of addressing issues of people in Kamuli, he's, he's, he's telling them, we are going, I'm going to give Honorable Kadaga a job, as if Honorable Kadaga is jobless. He goes to Koboko, and then he tells, ah, you know what, people? You support Dr. Ayumi. Instead of addressing the issues that are affecting 
the people in, uh, in Koboko. So we are talking about a candidate who has no any policies for this country. Nothing. B so Bishop exactly, Samuel, what, Bishop uh, Samuel, what do you expect? What do you expect police to do? Bishop Samuel, and only, uh, only his, his, his attention is in the trading centers where he's not supposed to be. Bishop Samuel, according to the messaging we are getting from the uh, opposition, they are saying that your presidential candidate, uh, Yore Kagoto Museveni, is in charge of the electoral commission, and the and and vice versa. The electoral commission is not charge of this in, of this election anymore. It is the incumbent, the presidential candidate, Yore Museveni. Is this true? Mm -mm. Those, the, 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 those people, um, the, those people always have. Um, those people always have, uh, they, they always must find the, uh, an excuse. Uh, they always m must find an excuse to say. Our <coughs> honest, otherwise, President Museveni has never been in charge of, uh, or is an independent body. Okay? It's an independent body whereby it does, it does not consult anyone. But President Museveni, actually, the custodian of this country is... He can be told that this is what is going to be done, but they don't want his decisions. They don't, they, 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 the president himself doesn't make decisions for, uh, for the electoral commission. That is one. Point number two, um, you need to know that actually uh, President Museveni uh, recommends names. Then the, those names, they are taken to the uh, appointments committee in the parliament. These people approve them. In the case they doubt them, then they cannot be approved. They cannot be approved for these jobs. So how is President Museveni in charge of the electoral commission? These people, they, ha they spend a whole term just doing blackmail and propaganda. When time for election comes, this is what they co continue saying. Now they have found an excuse of saying now police is for NRM. Now again, President Museveni is for uh, President Museveni is, is is in charge of uh, is in charge of. Uh, uh, the electoral commission that's not right mm. they should find out anything else to say but that's not it well thank you very they much already bishop, know they have bishop failed. Samuel. Mm. thank you very much bishop samuel from uganda media center we do also have gerard siranda the secretary general for the democratic party is it true that all this all the accusations are simply propaganda as intimated by bishop samuel i think for the first time i'm seeing a bishop politicking when you're a bishop you remain with that decorum of a bishop. And we expect that when you're a bishop and put in a position like that of a media center, mm. you let, even if you're with the regime, you let the regime know that this is wrong and this is right. Politicking is good, but there are realities. I don't know how Bishop Samuel has lived in Uganda. What Bishop is doing is trying to say that nothing, this torture and all this has mm. never happened. These things have been happening right from the BCJ, the times of, of Amama Mbabazi, the times of, uh, of Dr. Sebana Chizito. This is not news. So you still maintain what? that the presidential candidate, Jerome Seven, is in charge of the Electoral Commission? I, I don't want to go to that line mm. on whether he's in charge. Mm. But I think for me is that uh, the police <coughs> is double standard mm. in the application of, of the COVID-19 rules and regulations. Romeo, I mm. want the bishop to know that is not the role of the police. When it comes to the matters of election management, it is purely the electoral commission. The question of, uh, of venues, the question of allowing uh, in terms of you deal with the venue owner mm. and you deal with the commission, the returning officer. The, the returning officer for the presidential election is the chairman, national chairman of the electoral commission. The police only comes in to enforce and observe. But we have seen instances where the police just say, no, you're not going to do this. Even if the chairman the electoral commission has written a letter castigating and saying no to this, the police has not observed that. And you have seen the President Museven, when they came to Palisa, all my banners, all my posters, all my billboards were put down. So everything, the defacement of posters was done by the NRM? Everything was put down. They wanted the following morning from 7 to see that there is no other person here. Everything. And when I went to the police, they would say, yo, you put them tomorrow when he leaves. Mm. This is a multi-party dispensation. But we are driving a vehicle, Romeo, painted DP, FDC, NRM, but being engaged with the gears of a single-party a single party mm. system. I saw President Seven in Ntungamo waving. He should have remained in his car. Mm. 
<laughs> I saw him in uh, entering in uh, in Bushenyi waving. The same thing was in Palisa. Everywhere he goes, he is waving. Right. That at the venue, there is a social distance observed. <coughs> but he would have done, he would have passed the message to the people when you do a procession. You saw that in Itungam. Mm -hmm. And you will see it where he's heading. So for me, I think the question of saying uh, opposition, for me, is a lame excuse. There is nothing like opposition in this thing. Mm -hmm. We are all <coughs> running. We are equal. We should be candid. He says it is just propaganda. Opposition doesn't have any messaging. It, and uh, Mr. Mao, your presidential candidate, has been largely invisible on the campaign oh. trail. We've have, we haven't had any messaging from Norbert Mao. It is is a, it a strategy? It is intentional that uh, when you have a strong person, this <coughs> government is happy to deal with people who want to fall on the road, to mm. deal with people who have the message of the same. Because we mm. have been dealing with the same, mm. with the Mao of 2011, Defiant. with the BCJ mm. and all that. We want to speak to a particular category of people also who are still stranded on whether they will vote. No, but Mao has the best message. Nobody is passing the so message. So, no, but Mao is targeting the undecided we, vote. We, we think that there are a category of people who are tired of whatever is happening. And we should use this time to speak to them. Mm. And it's not true that... Uh, no, but Mao is having smooth run all over. Mm. He was tear gassed all through in Kamuli. Mm. In Imbali, he could not address the people. Today, he is in, in Sebei. He's speaking to the people of Sebei, Bukwa, and Kwen. Mm. It's also intentional, maybe, is by design that the media would love a person that is tear gas canisters all through. Mm. It is a candidate. It's a choice of a candidate. Mm. And our message that we should speak to people, we should take a line of if they say this is what you're doing, you're not following the regulations, we want to try to do and follow every regulation and speak to people mm -hmm. because we believe our candidate has the best, the best message. And of course, the, message, of course the messaging the we've been seeing uh, from elsewhere and uh, the factors that I talked to you, electoral violence and so forth, uh, selective application of the law, do you think they all negate the messaging we've been getting from electoral commission that this is going to be a free and fair election? From what is happening and from the speeches <coughs> of people that are in a, a media center, mm. government-owned entity that is supposed to give fair coverage. Mm. Because a media center is a government entity that is supposed to be fair. Mm. But you have seen the person speaking at media center even rejecting what is openly saying. Mm. I want to call upon the electoral commission. I believe in uh, the justice, Simon Biawakama and the team, that they have capacity to manage this process. But let them own the process. The election management is purely electoral commission. Police only comes in where they have called them to manage a process. But we should not hide under COVID. COVID affects every individual. And for my people of Palisa, mm. I know that the people use the president's vest to remove every banner, every poster of anything called opposition, and Sinanda specifically. Mm. We want to appeal to you, let's be peaceful, mm. let's follow every regulation, we are going to put our banners and posters in the hearts of our people. I know on 14 these people will know what to do. <coughs> mm. Uganda will exist even after past elections. Mm. We must appreciate, and the police must appreciate that we're all Ugandans. Your children of our people, you come from the community, don't accept the big tree to fall on you. When they are cutting a big tree, it falls on smaller ones. And I don't want our men and women in uniform <coughs> to be abused in a process of election. You Jared, don't know who Jared Siranda is the Secretary General for the Democratic Party. would also like to get the parting shots of the Uganda Media Center personnel, that is Bishop Samuel. Bishop Samuel, give us your uh, final submission before we wrap up this conversation. What will it take? What will it take to create a harmonized environment where all political parties can thrive moving forward? Just to make, just to make this clear, um, Media Center is part of uh, Ministry of ICT okay, and National yeah, Guidance. Yeah. It's a department. I'm from, uh, I work for Ministry of ICT. I'm a communications assistant. Why speak okay? Time. So, basically, what I, would do, what I would like to say, my brother here said that there should be equal coverage uh, at all in, uh, across all candidates. <coughs> yes, which is true. But which media house have we regulated from covering these other candidates? You tell me the media house, that this media house will say, no, don't, don't cover this candidate. And even the NRM, it's paying for, this, uh, for, for coverage. It's not for free. Where we haven't paid, you don't broadcast. Okay? That is one. Then uh, point number two, 
let us follow let us follow uh sops let the, the candidates uh, obey to the uh, electoral commission regulations because if 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 they uh, if they never wanted to follow uh, the regulations of the uh, of electoral commission they would have said you know what i'm not in agreement with this and i'm not i cancel my candidacy but the fact that they accepted that means they were to follow so if they don't follow don't expect the electoral commission to come out and say you people this is no electoral commission is working with the law enforcement which is police so police will get with will get to you if they see you are not following mm -hmm. these regulations so let us let us follow the electoral commission regulations let us follow minister of health sops it is careless talking for someone to say that covid 19 is an excuse nrm cannot hide behind covid 19. Uh, the nrm has been in power for 34 years i can assure you we cannot hide behind covid 19. we have done it all and the people of uganda are going to vote president yori kakuta Museveni, the nrm based on what it has done not on mere talking that one I can, that one, let me, let us just make it very clear. Mm. The issue of posters, yes, All right. you are not going to put posters mm. everywhere you find. You, in the, now like in the city, like in Kampala, you go and work with, uh, consult with the KCCA, they All will right. tell you where to, po uh, to put your posters. Thank, thank you the, very much, your, your, Bishop your banners. Samuel from Uganda Media Center for that submission. And uh, thank you for making the time to speak to us. Uh, Jared Siranda, thank you very much for having made the time to pass by Morning at NTV. We'll call on you some other time uh, and, and, and we continue. The leaders should not be arrogant. We should use our offices to call upon people to be peaceful. And it's not the role of an NRM, a spokesperson, a government worker to say candidate A does not have a message. Let Ugandans judge. All Let's right. give the opportunity to all Ugandans and as a leader. When you sit in the office, what comes of, out of your mouth should be calling upon Ugandans to be peaceful because outside elections mm. will exist. And Thank on so that much. note, we've come to the end of this conversation. My name is Romeo Busiku. To the kings, the queens, the boys and girls who are celebrating their birthdays on this particular day, would like to wish you a joyous one, but please be cognizant of the fact that we are dealing with a global pandemic that is rearing its ugly head uh, unabated. And also, the answer to our riddle is a carpet. Many thanks to those who actually submitted your answers on our social media pages, NTV Uganda uh, on Facebook and Twitter. We shall be interfacing uh, Monday. Yes, we shall be interfacing on Monday. Morning and NTV shall not be airing tomorrow morning, but I shall be right here to do NTV at 1.